Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Bite Size PD, where the topic is cleaning out and organizing your Google Drive, aka your CSD docs. Uh, the learning intention for this Bite Size PD is I'm learning to identify how much storage I have used in my CSD docs, aka Google Drive, and tips on how to filter and sort my CSD docs so that I can determine what content or items I want to keep, archive, and delete. And the success criteria is I'm no, I will know I'm successful when I can continue to monitor and manage the storage space in my CSD docs to keep me below the 75 gigabyte limit. So here's a quick rundown of the agenda of what we covered in this week's Bite Size PD. We'll start with a reminder about the quota, how to identify and track storage space, uh, some filtering options for your CSD docs, considerations when cleaning out your CSD docs, what to do when to keep items, what to do when you're archi archiving items, um, what to do when you're deleting items, and then what can you do if you need support. So a quick reminder about the CSD Docs quota. This is something that Google will be putting into place for Canyon School District in January, around the mid-January timeframe. Um, at that time, CSD employees, and this is teachers, staff, admin, um, will have a 75 gigabyte limit and students will have a 20 gigabyte limit. So what that means is, is if that limit is reached by an individual, you will find that you lose the ability to create and share documents. Um, if you're a teacher that uses the Google LTI in Canvas, you'll lose the ability to use that. Um, same for students. If they reach their limit, they lose the ability to create and share. And even if a teacher has a Google LTI assignment, they won't be able to access that. If this limit is reached at a district level, meaning our district as a whole has reached the limit that will impact all CSD employees and students. So we want to do our best as a shared community that we are aware of the, the storage that we have and um, how much we are using. And then each CSD docs account does provide a total of your storage space used. And that can be found when you log into your CSD docs on that home page in your drive on the left hand side you'll see where it says storage and right underneath storage will tell you the number of gigabytes used. So this is an example of what I have right now, which tells me I need to um, go through and clean up my Google Drive as well. So when it comes to accessing or quickly finding the content that maybe you can get rid of right away, because I do know going through your CSC docs can feel like a daunting task, especially if you know you have a lot of content there. So you have three options to do some filtering to quickly find some um, like items, content, or things that are taking up a lot of space in your drive. Option number one, and I'll, drop, I'll hop over to my Google Drive in just a second to show you live where these go. But option number one is you can use the advanced search option where you can search by type, things specifically owned by you, and you can click on search. Um, there's another option is just using the filter options that are right available in your My Drive, where you can quickly look for type, um, even like when something was modified last, or in your main menu as well, you can quickly filter by last modified to quickly get an idea of maybe some of the older documents and items that you have. One thing I do want to note, because this is something new to me that I was when I've been learning about this process, if you have any slides presentations that have videos embedded within the slide those videos will actually impact your storage space. Because we're learning as we are working with people to clean up their CSD docs or Google Drives, that photos and videos tend to be the biggest culprits and the things that are taking up most of the space. And so if you know you have slides presentations that have videos embedded throughout them, know that that's calculating into that storage space. So once again, that's that number um, off to the side of your drive. So let me go back into my Google Drive for a hot second. So the advanced feature, so when I log in, you'll see at the very top where it says search and drive, and I actually am selected in my drive. If I click on the advanced search, this is where I can choose the type. So knowing that videos and photos tend to be the biggest culprits, I can quickly go to videos. I can say the owner is owned by me. If I do a search, then it can pull up any videos that I have that I can quickly maybe determine if I want to keep or not. Uh, the other thing I can do, and I'm going to clear out my search. Remember, I go to my drive. I do have these filtering options right at the top, so I don't have to click on advanced search. I can quickly go to type and do videos, people. Once again, I can say owned by me. 
And then another option, that option number three, the last modified, if I click that arrow, I can quickly say, go to my oldest videos. And I actually have a video from 2013. Chances are, I forgot this video exists. I don't even need it anymore. So I can quickly delete this. I can move it to the trash. So that's using the filtering options is a great way to quickly get to some of those older videos, photos. Um, I can even look at the file size. And so if I notice anything that has a really big file size, maybe I want to really be thoughtful about whether or not I want to keep that document or that item um, in my drive. So when cleaning out your CSD docs, there's three things we want you to consider, and that's what are the items or content that you want to keep? What are the items or content that you want to archive? And then what can you just get rid of and delete? So for items that you want to keep, these should be items that you currently use, that you know you'll use on a, and access on a regular basis, and things that you know you'll need and or want to access during the current school year. So really, it's, it's the things that you know you're continuing to use. Archive, this is the content that you know you don't use regularly. Um, it's not going to be used or accessed during the school, the current or even the upcoming school year. These might also be items that you know you probably don't need, but you just can't delete it yet or you're just not ready to delete it yet. We all have those items. And sometimes for me, when I know I probably need to delete something, but I'm not quite ready to do it yet, I'll archive it and then give it a maybe a six months to a year. And if I still haven't accessed that item, chances are I'm never going to need it. Then I can delete it. And then the delete is these are items that right off the bat, you know for sure that you can delete. So really thinking about these three considerations, keep, archive, and delete when moving forward with cleaning out your CSD docs. So when it comes to keeping your, your items, there's some things to consider, especially some tips on organizing. Um, some tips that I have is one, use some consistent naming conventions, keep them short but meaningful to you and our teammates. Consider adding a date, including the month, day, and year. That can actually help you um, when you do those quick filters, it gives you a quick glimpse into when those um, things were created and used. Um, something fun that you can do in your Google Drive is you can color code, code folders. You just right click on the folder and you can select the color change. This just gives a visual representation of the different um, items you have in your uh, drive. You can organize your content based on hierarchy. This is where when you're using when you're naming a file, you can use a hashtag or even numbers to help put those items in order. So when you um, when they show up in your Google Drive, they can go from like say about one, two, three, it'll show up in that numerical order. Um, another way to provide a visual cue is to use emojis or special characters when naming your files and folders. Uh, you can create priority docs and files. Um, you can make, there is a section called the priority, so you can make that your default homepage. And you can drag and drop any file to make it a priority if you know there are some folders that you, or ac um, documents that you access on a daily basis. You can explore that priority um, section of your Google Drive. Uh, using the star feature, it's a quick way. I like, I call it favoriting my items where if you know their documents that you want to have quick access to, when you use that star feature, it just provides that quick access. And if you haven't used or learned about the workspaces in Google Drive, it's a way for you to gather groups of items from your drive into a workspace that you create for quick access. So I wanted to go into my drive and just show you a few of those. So the priority, it's this section here off to the side. This is where Google tries, tries to do a good job of listing some things that it's recognizing that you're accessing recently. And so when you're in your drive, if there's any documents that you know you want to have in that priority, you can just click and drag it over to the priority or you don't have to use it at all. Because um, for some people who don't use priority, the workspaces is where if you come here, you can actually create a workspace. So maybe it's like a PLC or a project you're working on. You can give it a title and any documents that you want associated with that uh, project. It just provides a way to quickly access. And then when you go to your workspaces, the documents are right there for you to use. And then anytime you star one of your documents, so that's where you do have a starred section off to the side. It shows up in your starred um, 
section. This is another um, section in my Google Drive that I need to take the time to clean up because I, over the years, have starred a lot of things, and I'm recognizing they all don't need to be starred anymore. So those are just some tips to help you as for any of the items that you plan to keep. It's not just keeping them, but maybe thinking about how you want to organize them um, for that quick access and identification moving forward. Um, another thing to think about if you're using or keeping items um, in your Google Drive is using the shared drive within our Google instance. Uh, shared drives are special folders in Google Drive that you can use to store, search, and access files. So very much like what you're used to in Google Drive. The difference is this dr drive belongs to a, a team instead of an individual. So if anyone in your team or members of your team leaves, the files will stay in the shared drive so you can keep sharing the information and work from anywhere. Um, a good example of this that helped me is um, in my job, I inherited a Google folder from a colleague who um, was leaving the district. And so I was using her, I was accessing that folder almost on a daily basis. And then one day the file disappeared because the district finally cleaned up her CSD docs and deleted her account. And what that did was it deleted that folder that I accessed on a daily basis. Like, in fact, I was actually in the folder when it got deleted. And so had we put that in a shared drive, when she left, I still would have had access to it. The good news is I was able to work with IT and we found it, but that's not always the case when something like that happens. Um, Another example of when teachers might want to use or a school might want to use a shared drive is if you are, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a slides presentation that has videos embedded throughout of it, out it and you're recognizing is taking up a lot of your space. And so let's say this music teacher has that presentation and they have shared that presentation with other music teachers throughout the district. That slides presentation is taking up a lot of space in each of those individuals Google Drive. If they put it in a shared drive, that could move the presentation out of their um, my drive, meaning their personal storage space, put it in a shared space so that slideshow presentation is taking space in the shared drive versus everyone else's individual drive. I hope that makes sense. So it's just a way where you don't have to have a copy of your for yourself. You can put it in a shared drive and it no longer affects your quota or the limit that you have. Something, it's like a word of caution with the shared drives is that once it's in the shared drive, everyone becomes an owner. So you have to have a level of trust that you're not going to mess with it, delete things, because if someone deletes it, it deletes it for everyone. If someone edit it, ed edits it, it will edit for everyone. So if you haven't explored the shared drive or utilized the shared drive, it's definitely worth checking out, especially for any items that you keep that you know you share with other teachers, other colleagues in the Canyon School District. And then off to the side, you'll see where in your Google Drive it can actually be found. And you just utilize it just like you do um, the content and folders in your drive. So when it comes to items to archive, so once again, these are the items that you're not quite ready to, to delete yet, but they also aren't items that you use regularly. Um, it's up to you to decide what needs to be archived. Um, and you also need to decide what archiving system or program to use. Um, it's important to know that this option is self-selected and it will not be supported or managed by the district. So that means if an option that costs money is selected, you are responsible for the cost and the management. Uh, there's two options for archiving that the Canyon School District recommends. It's an external hard drive or a personal cloud-based storage option. And I'm going to go through both of those in just a moment. So let's actually first talk about the external hard drive option. What I have linked here are two examples. So they're not the only options out there, um, but they're two examples that um, we wanted to show. It kind of gives you an example of a high end versus a low end. It kind of comes down to how much you're willing to spend and how much um, space and storage space you actually want. So in this presentation, I have two links and they'll take you to Amazon where this gives you an example of um, an external hard drive that you can buy. You can see how much it costs. Um, you can see the cost will vary based on how much a storage space you want. Um, the other example 
I think it's a little bit more money. So $94 versus 50. And this is just a range. Um, and these are not, once again, the only hard drives, external hard drives that are out there. They're not the only external hard drives that Canyon School District ever recommends. It really is up to you about, because maybe there's a brand that you really like to use. Maybe there's one that you've already used in the past. Um, it's just identifying what external hard drive you would want, how much you're willing to spend, and how much space you want. So when it comes to um, an external hard drive, there, are, of course, are pros and cons. The pros, data security, because um, you have a little bit more control of who has access to that external drive. The speed um, with, with an external hard drive, there's a one-time cost, and you have full control. The cons, um, it can be physically vulnerable to damage, or maybe you get lost or it gets stolen. That's at risk of loss or theft. Um, there's a limited capacity, meaning if you only buy so much storage and run out, then you have to buy another one if you or delete things on that. And it is a manual management. Um, I did want to show you this document because on this slide and another one, I have this list linked that it goes into a little bit more specifics about um, the pros and cons for the external hard drive. So if you are thinking about the external hard drive, I definitely recommend looking at this document just to get a little bit more detail about those pros and cons. And they may not be the only pros and cons out there, but they're the main ones that we came up with as a district to share with you. So option number two in archiving is using a personal cloud-based storage option. And I'm saying personal because once again, this is up to you um, to determine which one you wanna use. And it's recommended, next let me show you some of these options and they're not the only ones out there. I'm gonna move my face for a second. Um, so like Dropbox is an example, a personal Google Doc, if you have a personal Google Doc account or Gmail, um, OneDrive, iCloud, or if there's another cloud-based storage option that you're already familiar with and that you already use, feel free to use it. Um, it's recommended that all of the options above, if selected, that you're using your personal email and account information, because once again, it won't be um, paid for or supported or managed by the district, it's up to you. And like the external hard drive, there are also pros and cons. Um, pros with an, a personal cloud-based storage option, accessibility, meaning you can access it from any device that can access the web. Um, as long as you have internet, you usually can you know, access your, your backup. Um, cost efficiency, some options will start free, but then going into a con, depending how much space you want, you may find yourself having to pay um, more or a yearly cost. Um, backup and recovery, integration, collaboration. Many of the cloud-based storage options allow you to add others to your, um, your account. So if you do share documents, <clears throat> scalability and even security. And then cons, it does require the internet. Um, there could be recurring and additional costs, um, privacy concerns limited control, security risks. The biggest one for me is that dependency on service providers, meaning you're trusting that this company is going to be around year to year for you to continue to use. Um, the ones we've listed have been around for quite a while, so I don't anticipate them going anywhere, but technology is technology and it always shifts and changes. So you wanna just do your homework to make sure that you're choosing a reputable and um, solid company. And like the external hard drive, that same link at the bottom will take you to the cloud-based storage pros and cons if you want a little bit more detail about the ones that I have listed. So really, it's to, when you're archiving your items, it's really deciding what's going to be the best way for you to back up that information. Um, how do you want to access it? How much are you willing to spend? Um, and once again, if, those, if there's those items that you're not quite ready to delete yet, you archive them. But then also, this archive should go through a process as well. When you realize, I archived this, I wasn't ready to delete it, I never use it, I can now officially delete it. So just something to consider as you are archiving your things. Oops. And then when it comes to deleting items, um, it's just as simple as moving it to the trash, um, when things are deleted, you'll see on the left-hand side of your drive, there is a trash icon. It gets moved to that section. And once it's in the, that section, it basically will live there for about 30 days. So it is kind of a, a, a fail, not fail safe. I don't want to say it's not fail safe for sure, but it is an option that if you accidentally delete something, 
you can go into that trash and recover it if you need to. Otherwise, after 30 days, it is deleted forever. So that's why I, I recommend when you start going through this cleanup process, maybe start your filtering with the oldest items because those tend to be the easiest things to get rid of. And you might be surprised at what you have in there from years ago that you forgot that you even had. And then you can go move on. But we all have our, our processes, but that's one that I've seen help teachers the most when deciding what to delete forever. So what to do if you need support? Um, you do have your school-based instruction, instructional coaches and field techs who are always available to support and answer questions. But as a reminder, archiving, that option is up to you to determine. If there's an additional cost, you're responsible for that. And based on what you select and what you need support with, your school's field tech and instructional coach, they may have a limited knowledge. So they can help you as much as they can, but just know like if you choose a cloud-based storage they may nev never heard of, um, they can help you as much as they can. They may even just start Googling. That's what I would do. I would Google some things and I could help, help find some information, but um, they'll be able to do as much as they can. I know they're willing to help, but sometimes they're limited. So that is the Bite Size PD. Um, if you have any questions, once again, you can reach out to your, your um, school-based field tech, your instructional coaches. You also can reach out to me. Uh, my name is Camille Cole. Uh, I can be reached at camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. Um, and thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. If you would like to relicense your credit, um, please fill out the form. It's the form that's linked on the third bullet. And then, as always, we have our Bite Size PDs posted on our Bite Size PD webpage. You can always go back at any time and watch any of our PDs and once it filled up, realize your credit form out for credit. So I hope you have a great day and have fun cleaning out your CSD docs, aka Google Drive.